In the meantime, Wall Street is set for a positive open today, but with traders taking a cautious approach ahead of the latest Federal Reserve minutes that indicate if more rate hikes are coming this year. Futures for the Dow Jones Industrial Average are up to 0.23 percent to 22,027, while those for the S&P 500 index gain 0.2% to 2,469. Futures for the Nasdaq 100 index trade at 0.2% higher at 5,928.5. And Asian equity markets are broadly higher today as short positions over tensions in the Korean Peninsula unwound. However, caution remains ahead of joint U.S.-South Korean military exercises next week. The Shanghai Composite Index barred early losses to close 0.1% lower, with large gaps to come into selling pressure after recent gains. Stocks were higher in Hong Kong, with the Hang Seng Index gaining 0.9%. The South Korean Kospi outperformed as traders returned from a public holiday to catch up with the region's early gains. The benchmark index finished up 0.6% after opening about 1% higher. In Japan, the Nikkei stock average finished down 0.1%, even as the U.S. dollar was up 0.1% against the yen. Now let's tell you more about Air Berlin. That's Germany's second largest airline, which has filed for bankruptcy protection as a key shareholder at Etihad Airways withdrew funding following years of losses. The German government has granted a bridging loan of 150 million euros to allow Air Berlin to keep its plane in the air for three months and to kill the jobs of its 7,200 workers in Germany while negotiations continue. The move offers Lufthansa and rivals a chance to acquire slots at airports such as berlin Tegel and Dusseldorf with Germany's largest airline keen to defend its domestic position against expansion by Lucas' rival Ryanair. Struggling German airline Air Berlin filed for insolvency on Tuesday and said it was in Turks with Lufthansa over the German airline buying parts of its businesses. German transport minister says the government had learned of Air Berlin's situation on Friday night, but was sure a bridging credit of 150 million euros would be paid back and flights maintained until November. The loan has priority, and that is why the revenue is expected from the sales of the slots and the negotiation to the rest of the companies guarantees the credit will be the first thing to be paid. Martin Scholz, SPD leader and rival of Chancellor Merkel in the upcoming German elections, condemned the actions of the government with the provision of a bridging loan. It's good that German economy minister Bridget Zipris reacted quickly to news of Air Berlin's insolvency and took the initiative with the bridging credit that will be provided to the airline. This means that the most important task can be tackled. A top priority is that all passengers are able to get home and that the employees are protected and offered some security for their planning. Shells called for passengers and Air Berlin workers to be prioritized as solutions are found, but warned against wage dumping and protectionism as businesses vie to pick up Air Berlin parts. However, the German Pilots Union insists the market is strong enough to absorb the blow and would protect German jobs, but called Etihad Airways actions disgraceful. Etihad has behaved utterly disgracefully. They came to Germany and then tried to basically buy the German market with oil money. And when that didn't work, they then withdrew without fulfilling their responsibilities towards the German employees. The Etihad should have made sure there was a proper transition to other bidders. Analysts also lend their voice to the issue. Berlin geht jetzt in die Insolvenz. Air Berlin will now be gutted. Certainly, some staff will head for Lufthansa. The flight quarters will be taken on, and Lufthansa will now most likely now push for its low-cost carrier to cover the routes that were covered by Air Berlin. Lufthansa will really be happy about this. Lufthansa was the best performing Europe stocks up 4.7 percent with budget rivals EasyJet and Ryanair hot on its heels after the German government said Lufthansa and another airline were in talks to take over some of Air Berlin's assets. Air Berlin still has its own capital and combined with credits provided by the government, 
Flights are expected to continue until the end of November. Now back here in Nigeria, one of the five tier one listed lenders, GT Bank, has announced quarterly earnings that beat the street. The banking giant announces earnings per share of 300 kobo and a cash dividend of 30 kobo per unit as its revenue grows 5% in the quarter to 90 billion naira. GT Bank revenue and net income at 42 billion naira were boosted by strong interest income on customer loans and income on fixed income securities trading. The credit research report released today by London-based Exotics Capital says GT Bank earnings were also impacted by higher foreign exchange trading, but gains on FX revaluation was down significantly. In the meantime, GT Bank's customer deposits was down 2% in the second quarter, as well as loans to customers. In Stambik, Uganda, a unit of South Africa's Standard Bank Group has declared a lower pre-tax profit of $36 million in the first half of 2017. This is due to low interest earnings. The lender's management is positive that the second half holds better prospects as individual and commercial borrowers take advantage of much lower rates. Banks have been lowering lending rates over the last year in sync with easing by the Central Bank of Uganda. The average lending rate in June was about 21%, compared with 25% in February last year. The central bank started policy easing in April 2016, gradually cutting its benchmark rate from 17% to 10%. Elsewhere, shares in Vodacom Tanzania PLC, part of South Africa's Vodacom Group, rose nearly 6% above their issue price on their debut at the Dar es Salaam Stock Exchange on Tuesday. Vodacom placed 560 million shares at 850 shillings each in Tanzania's biggest initial public offering, raising $213 million. The IPO is part of government-imposed requirements for all telecom companies to list at least 25% of their shares locally. Foreigners, initially banned from participating, bought 40% of the shares. Tanzania hopes a mandatory listing of telecom companies will improve transparency and offer the public a share in the industry's profits. And political tensions in the ruling African National Congress will weigh on South Africa's economic growth. And that's according to Moody's Investors Service in its credit opinion statement on South Africa. The ratings agency maintains that key constraints to growth are domestic, including political tensions and policy uncertainty. Moody's predicts South Africa's economy would grow by 0.5% this year, and 1.2% in 2018. Business Incorporated returns in a moment. Please stay with us.